Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your oh. Archerpa, and uh, it's black, baby. Okay, there we are. Hey, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archerpa, and today I'm going to show you easily how to draw and paint in acrylic the black stallions. This is a beautiful Arabian horse head in two colors. We're going to use just black and white paint. Uh, so the materials are going to be so, so very simple. I am <laughs> the whole black screen. Just <laughs> This is live streaming. Um, <laughs> not rehearsed not whatsoever. Rehearsed. I was not ready for that. There it is. That's what we're going to be painting. So we're going to be painting this gorgeous, gorgeous Arabian horse head. I am uh, processing this for beginners. So we're going to really break down the steps. We're really going to show you everything. We're going to use the gridding method today to draw in the horse's head. And it's a very easy method to learn how to draw. If you check the description below, you're going to see a link to our website and the traceable as well as the grid reference will be there for you to download so you can have that and it's nice to just print it out as you're painting the painting so you have your own printout of the image that we're working on today there's lots of information about color exchanges and more uh data that you might possibly need and it's all free accessible for you and the last interesting note besides the fact that on the mic is my husband john hi guys giving me black screens flipping things around i don't even know what's going on over there but usually he tracks me with all of our cameras and make sure that the sound works and that's the YouTube and make sure that you at home get to see everything you need to see so you can create this for yourself. Also today, this is a collaboration with Ginger Cook. We're going to at two o'clock, she's going to be doing her own Arabian horse head. So you can follow that. There's a link in the description below for that as well. So it's a whole day of painting horses, John. I'm up for it. It's horse Saturday, mm -hmm. specifically Arabian horse Saturday. All right, I'm ready to hop on in. All right, let's see okay. what we got her. Okay. Oh, you, you want to look over here. Oh, okay, there we go. Sort of maybe theoretically. <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't need that up yet. Okay. <laughs> so thrown now. Okay. <laughs> this is an 11 by 14 surface. It's just an artboard. It's not superior or less than than canvas. It's just a surface to paint on that's suitable for acrylic paint. You could use canvas, you could use paper for acrylic, or you can use these artboards. I like them because they're easy to store and they're economical. On here, as we like to do, are some wishes and intentions. And because of what we're doing, I thought I'd take uh, two things from my, two of my favorite horse books, which is, of course, Black Beauty and The Black Stallion. The first one is a quote from Black Beauty, and it goes to the wish that I wish that every horse everywhere has a forever home. You're really good now. You're like, you're like challenge accepted, <laughs> has a forever home, um, and that they're all safe, and they all have that serenity that we look for through the entire Black Beauty book. And the quote is, my troubles are all over, and I am home. And often before I am awake, I fancy I am still in the orchard at Bur Burtswick, standing with all of my old friends under apple trees. So definitely, I wish that for all horses everywhere. And then finally, Walter Farley's quote, which is, and I want to dedicate this painting to the same thing, dedicated to all the boys and girls who love horses but never have had one of their own. So that's our dedication to you guys. So this is just dedicated to every horse lover out there. I'm really going to bring this video together and show you how to create this. If it's been your dream to paint a horse, we're going to show you how you can succeed at that today. Now, the first step to that fabulousness, though, is to paint the entire canvas black. How easy and fun is that? Hmm. So I'm just going to put some black paint on the canvas. <laughs> you're just you're going Yeah, I'm just going to be lazy and just put it right on the canvas. Direct application. Direct application. Today's paint colors are Mars black and titanium white. I might use a little bit of a zinc or tinting white. That's a very transparent white. If we're not getting the effect we want with just titanium white and Mars black. So that'll be good for you to know. I'm going to show you some great blending techniques. I'm going to show you some great value techniques. Uh, we're really going to cover how to draw horses heads. We're going to talk about that quite a lot because I remember as a little girl, I could not draw enough horses, paint enough horses, read enough horse books, hmm. have enough briar horse models. It was a whole thing. That's a nice black finish that I'm getting here, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, where did I put the, oh, there it is, black tube. I'm just going to put more paint out. I was at the end of this tube, so I was like, oh, I might as well just use it to paint it black. As you are, mm -hmm. end of the end of the thing. So, paint this background black. We forgot to do that before the show. Oh, so many things. 
So many things did not there, get there handled. <sighs> but you know what? What? We're live. We are live. And, we're, and, and it works. You know, that black, That's always a good thing. That is such a dark black. It just disappears into the darkness. It's like... Whoa. It goes into the darkness. I'm just painting everything black now. It would just be... It would just be like a singularity of black paint if if you if you had if there wasn't the little edge lines on there. So to do this whole painting, and if you saw me do this, and you're like, "What brush is she using?" Oh, I'm yeah. using a number thirty bright. It's a ruby satin from the silver brush line. Um, you can find that in a lot of locations. Mm-hmm. But really, you just want a nice big brush that lets you paint the surface expeditiously. Remember to wash the brush out after you use it and lay it flat that's going to preserve your brushes and save you a lot of money in the long run i'm going to dry this so i can show you the next step okay so while she's drying that i'm going to say especially with those darker colors uh like black and things uh don't use heat when let me get the camera working there don't use heat when drying it because you can get color shift and color shift is where the paint goes from dark to light and it's really pronounced on black. You can see in pro paints don't do it as much. Um, typically, they just change sheen. They go from like glossy to matte, um, which again is a whole other thing. But color shift happens when uh, you use heat to dry it and you don't really want that. So No, you don't. I'm going to put my grid over here for my reference in a second. I'll hold over here. I have here what is called a T-square ruler. It allows me to make very straight and square lines. You can use a regular ruler if you have a steady hand. I'm going to tuck this in here, and I'm going to make a mark every inch of the surface. Now, again, I mentioned this reference is on the website. You can just go print this out if you're wanting to do the grid. I'm going to come along here, or you can just grid along with me because I'm going to go through each step. We're not going to speed through this. I'm not going to do the Martha Stewart kitchen on you. We're going to just actually show you what it takes to do this so you can manage your expectations and have more success. If you didn't have a T-square, yes, you could use maybe a piece of paper or... Uh, or what? I don't think you could use a piece of paper. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Couldn't, couldn't the same way you fold a uh, paper towel? Make- I think a paper towel can be nice to get a square. I think paper, uh, unless you're very good at origami, can be a challenge. Oh, yeah. I guess you... Yeah. I'm going to take my chalk here and I'm going to go along and I'm going to make a grid. Make a little grid using my ruler. And what will happen is, is that my reference here, you can see, is on a grid. Yep. And then I make the same grid on my surface and I only draw what I see in each of the gridded squares. If that makes sense. It's a little time consuming to do. Um, however, it's a great skill because it will allow you to really create anything that you want. It'll increase your confidence in your artwork. You're going to feel better about what you're doing. Um, you're going to feel braver in some of your choices because you won't be saying, I'm not going to paint that. I'm not going to do that because you're overwhelmed by the image itself. Yeah. This gridding seems to be, uh, like a a really powerful tool for getting images up there. I'm I mean like it's made me think about some things I I would like to just <sighs> do see I would like to see made and it's I'm now at a place where you might I've, make it yourself. I've watched you so much. It's it's not that I want to make it, it's that I would like to see it made and I can't convince anyone else to do it. I have to know what this thing is. Some I, if it's cars you're right you're on your own. See, see what I have to live with. If you love cars and car it's, art and motorcycles, uh, check out Billy the Artist on Instagram. I'm I'm the cobbler's Seriously. husband with no shoes. This is unrelated to what we're doing today, but if you just love car art and mechanical art, I follow Billy the Artist on Instagram. I'm a huge fan. I think he's a tremendous talent. <laughs> okay, so once I've made these squares, I have to make the squares that go along the 14. Now, obviously, my T-square is only 12 inches long. And what that means is I'll have to grid it from both sides. Ah. Super doable, though, and you can always find a way to make it work. So what was it you wanted to do? Oh. I was shouting out Billy again. Oh, no. no it's, I, it's a secret. 
No, it's not a secret. I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't volunteering. I was just saying that I think the gritting method is useful. I wasn't trying to volunteer that I was going to do anything. I think you should do something. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm. We got so many things that you're doing. <laughs> I think you should do something. <laughs> Let's make I, John do something. No. I think if I'm going to do something, well, I tell you what, I might use gritting method to do some sketches of some things I might sculpt. There you go. And Actually, this works when you're transferring an image to sculpture. I've seen people use the gritting method to create uh, four-sided renderings to help them with their sculpture. Interestingly enough. So they render something from four different angles, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes six angles. And then they use those renderings to help them work the um, sculptural material that they're using, be it marble or clay. Yeah. So you can see I'm just coming here and using these marks. And then I'll come back the other side and use the marks to finish the lines. Um, and again, when you see this horse go in, if you've been struggling with drawing horse heads, and we're going to talk about horse head structure, specifically the Arabian breed. Mm. Because they have a very specific head structure, uh, different than other horses. And so we're going to talk about that. Because when you're doing something particular like that, where you're like, I'm going to uh, paint a Appaloosa, I'm going to paint a Tricaner, I'm going to paint um, a Clydesdale, I'm going to paint a Shetland. I could just go through horse breeds right now. Now I'm just showing off horse <laughs> Um, Frisian, <laughs> Pasifino, <laughs> Tennessee Walker, <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> okay, enough showing off. Um, I just think I, I, I think I just threw down some horse girl, like throw down there. <laughs> like, like I'm an actual horse girl. Um, so you know we're going to talk about what specifically makes those those features on an Arabian and and how we're going to lean into that, especially to create the black. All right. So I have a grid. Do you, you have a grid? Do you, you have, have a, grid a grid at home? I, we could do <laughs> Tron cycle races. Uh, actually, I'm going to wait to put out my paint until I draw in. Now I know. Oh, there it is. So we got a little. This is a charcoal pencil. This is by General's Pencil Company. In the description, I do have a link for this. So you can go down there and check that out and go right to that. It's affiliate link, but at least you can see the pencil. Hmm. Now over here, what I'm going to basically do is I've got my reference. Right, and each square has either nothing in it or an object in it. And what I do is I work just this square. Right. So if I come here, I go, and we can see this, but we'll count it out just in case uh, you're very, very new to this idea. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six squares. I don't have to draw until the sixth square. So I simply come here one, two, three, four, five, six. And all I have to do is draw what I see in this square. So we see the ear curl up. This is very typical of this breed. They have a very thin skinned ear that is curved. So when they point forward, they're almost like little devil horns, which is uh, actually telling to what will happen to you if you mess with the horse at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're actually wonderful. We can see the ear comes a little bit back here. And we've got a mane coming forward. The main comes forward. If you look in this square, which again is six over and one down, it comes forward a little bit. And there definitely, it comes back a little bit, uh, almost the halfway point here. So that's the main coming forward. The ear comes down here. The hair continues down through this square, like barely a little corner, and then down into the third square down below. So you can see how we just break down the squares. And I really only need to see the reference that I'm currently on. So if the main is going to come here and curl back across, right, you know that you've got this sort of dish of a forehead beginning. And that line is going to have to come here and come up. See? Now, as we come out to the eye socket, you're going to notice it's going to bow out. It comes down and then swings in. And this is about the dish of the horse's face. Arabian horses have what's a dish. It's a scoop in. Most horses will have a very straight nose or even a bowed nose. 
but Arabians will scoop in. You'll see large oversized nostrils, so they can take an air. This is a desert horse. They have large oversized nostrils, and you're going to find that the eyes are quite large, and the bone structure around the eyes is defined and delicate. Things that you need to be aware of when you're working on your Arabian. Huh. I'm going to bring this line here. And you can even see these little other refinement lines that you have to deal with. Right? And so you just come down here. Continuing to use just the grid that you're on, right? So now I'm down to here. We just went through that. I get to do that one right there. So this peeks out the beginning of the nose and comes down here. The little lippy curves through these two parts here. You would put that reference up here closer the oh just while you're yeah I just I'm trying to keep both in view there too. Oh but they they can print out too. Oh that's true. Yeah. Let them they'll print out it's free. <laughs> that's true. There is a reference image of this grid on the website. On the website. So or you, free. Or free. So you can go out there and check that out. It's uh, There's a bunch of the cool resources. It does work if you can't print it out. We've definitely had people report that they were able to follow my grid square by square. Ah. It just takes a little bit longer. But they've been able to grid without the reference. Now, I don't have to bring this back because much of the horse's head is in black lighting. So this photographer did a wonderful thing. Now, I love the structure here on this nose, and there's going to be some things we pay attention to. This highlight area here, I like to, it almost looks like a six to me when you, when you see, do you see the number kind of six there? Kind yeah. Backward six. So we're going to really be looking at defining that space and the way this is bowed out as he takes in air. Now, when I'm looking at this, that's a, like if this square over, so it's coming up to this square, kind of in the middle. And then we bring this around here. Pretty down deep is the nostril. Can you see how that's a little bit down deep? Mm hmm Comes forward a pitch. And maybe I need to push that out. And I can see that as I'm going in these grids if I need to push something out. I know I've got a shadow I'm going to have to be talking about here. And I've got a structure I'm going to have to be talking about here. So that's pretty terrific. I've got my little nose here. Now, coming across here, and this really illustrates it. Notice I talk about that on a skull, the eyes will be on that same axis across the, the radial of the skull. You can see that reflected in the grid. So we're going to come over one, two, three from this eye. And that's when we begin to talk about his eye. There's the top of it. Comes down into the grid below it. Bring this back around. And the corner meets here. Now important stuff that you need to be aware of is the structure of the ocular bone coming up. And we're definitely going to have to worry about this little divot that happens right here. You can actually take this minute to go to like pay attention to like, oh, I've got to really talk about that bone see how we can get up into that mm -hmm. and give ourselves some reference for later you can even come down below the eye here so if the bottom of the eye you go down starts to come across really here but we're gonna there's this very important bone that we've got to paint right there highlight so we'll talk about that a bit and now we can come back up to this ear up here babe so, the next ear starts really three down. All right, so right here in this space is where that ear begins to pull itself up, where the structure begins to build. This is the one that we see much see more there. in space, and much more of it is defined. It's going to come right up here. So you can, again, see that cartilage arcing up. Bring this down. And there is the opening that we're going to just slightly imply later. Now coming off the ear, mid-spot, 
there. Do you see how that's going to come down the neckline? Yeah. Sometimes people really struggle with the neckline. This is another good reason that a grid can really, really help you. Right? And you know you've got we've just got those little highlights and shadows. And, the, and you may want to, if you've got a chance, you know, talk a little bit about what's going to be happening in this eye. But I really get into the eyes. If you've ever been into horses' eyes, you're going to really like this class because we're going to get deep into it. How are we doing? How's our grid? <gasps> Good. I love it. Before we get on to the next section, do we have any grid questions? Hmm. Let's see here. There's, you know, everyone's pretty much enjoying the gridding. There's, there's, to, they appreciate the horsey stuff. They, uh... Oh, what size? Uh, what size of the squares on the paper? One inch. One inch. So you're doing a one inch to one inch mm -hmm. grid yeah. reference there. Yeah. Are you putting paint out there? I am putting out titanium white. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put out Mars black. Right here. And guys, I'm going to put out some tint white. I'll let you know if we need it, but I want to have it out if it's there. The reason that you want zinc white or tint white or mixing white, they're all called those things, but it's essentially the same product, is this won't cream out the black, making it kind of that dead gray. Sometimes you need that when you're trying to get some of these more subtle light effects that you can have mm. on your little horse's head. This is a good time now to also sort of refine any of the elements of your drawing that you want to refine. You know, talk about any of the things while you've got your little grid here. Now, your horses, even when you're using the reference images, I, they always have a very distinctive cinnamon look. Me too. I'm, and what I, I, it's very hard for me. To, I'm, after years and years and years of watching you draw, I would say that you tend to add some anthropomorphism to the eyes, mouth, and nose without intention. <laughs> I'm just saying it happens. <laughs> Are you just saying? <laughs> just saying. I'm going to grab, I'm looking for just a brush. I might grab this little filbert. I'm just looking for a brush that's about this width, right? About a little short, smaller than the width of my nail. This is a filbert. Filberts can be nice for blending and effects. And let's just begin talking about maybe this back area at the back of the mane. So I'm going to take a little of my white over to my black and I'm going to make a fairly dark gray and we're going to begin the process of i'm going to just do my reference without grids creating the highlight space and i'm going to be dealing with here there we go pull up a little reference it's image really easy and notice i'm going to be very softly look i'm very softly brushing back and forth I'm not going to worry about cleaning out the grid, guys, until the end. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Because I have so much refinement to do and I can clean it up once all these elements are in. I might need the grid. If you, if you have a grid at home, I might need the grid to go back and find where an object is as I'm painting. So if I leave all this oh. grid in, it can give me a little bit of something to anchor to. Really, you guys specifically. <laughs> So don't get too rushed to take out your grid, right? Because you might want it in a second. Yes. I'm beginning that first layer of highlight. Now there's a little bit of a dark shadow there, so I can come back with just pure black. And I come right into this space. Now you're using Mars black. I am using Mars black. You could use carbon or lamp black. I wouldn't use bone black for this. I think the only black that would be an epic mistake for this particular piece would be a bone black. Why is that? Uh, bone black is too soft and transparent and warm to remotely give you a chance of getting the effect. Gotcha. So I'm going to get a little more white into my black. You can see I'm making a lighter, lighter version of this. And I'm going to come behind the ear, maybe even a little lighter. I'm right behind this ear, pull out a very soft little reflection. It's going to come back here, and we're going to just arc that back up. I'm 
because there's going to be a thing happening with the mane here. Now, I may rinse my brush out, wipe off the excess water, and before my paint is completely dry, kind of blend it out. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Creating that soft resistance. Create that soft, soft resistance. And again, let's come right here and talk about this little reflection. A little more white. Getting a little more, more white. Brushing another layer of the highlight. Now I am going to want to talk a bit about the mane that is sort of starting right in this space and coming over. And it is a very dark gray, almost impossible to see against the black. So I, I feel really bad for John, the camera dude. The camera actually is doing a pretty good job of catching this. I had him dialed in. Um, oh, beforehand? Yeah. So, well, I, we have been blessed by our community with some pretty fantastic cameras. Thank you guys. So we have them set up today so that we can see these blacks interact with each other. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like pulling this little space over and you can kind of see from the brush stroke that I am talking about this main. But to do that, I've got to really also pay attention to how the paint is working on my on my brush. Now I can come here and also highlight out just some and of that hair. And then as you come back here, like, whoop, whoop, and then a little bit, but just a hint, guys. It's re it really is worth down downloading this reference image. Yeah. Because it's just, it just doesn't do it justice here. This little yeah. picture. It doesn't. You know, it's and, such the gorgeous reference. All right. I'm going to actually, can you see what I'm doing here with the zinc? And you can see how it's, the tinting white it just is different that it you can really add a lot of it it's very transparent and i can come in and look at that and maybe a much needed but yet soft little highlight of reflection so what we're trying to create horses have this especially warm-blooded horses have a shine to their their coat and it can be a real challenge for artists to face that shine, but actually it's not really that hard. It's just about having some tools and knowing where we're going. And you use the same black on the background that you're using. Yeah, we're using the same black. The only thing that we might change up are the whites. And again, you can do it with just two. And you can go ahead and where you need to, like here, you can come back in with the black and blend this. See how we're blending? And making sure that's a nice transition. Let's come here. There is a very sharp line that comes off the back of the ear and down, and we don't want to lose that. We have these, these little steeped transitions, and then we have this very shiny transition. I'm pulling out quite a lot of the black out of my paint. I've got some just white here, and we're going to do something. We're going to come here and add just a little bit of pop reflection. See how we're doing? Just a little bit. So this is the hot spot of that reflection. A few little hairs that have caught or glinted just maybe a little more light. A couple back here, not too many. But once we get that in, let's back up and look at that. See how that looks shiny now? Yeah. It doesn't have that dead look. It doesn't have that <laughs> kind of lost look that we don't want. Let's work our ear. Okay. What's funny? Good question. Uh-oh, the dog's I, been loose and not on leash with you. I I know. So this this is this is right. rated. I mean, like, so I've, I'm sure you've, I bet in mar being married to you. Yeah. I've never, this has not come up. So I'm, I'm okay. Excited. Now you're pretty familiar with, this is a, what kind of horse? This is an Arabian. An Arabian. And it is. The black stallion. 
what you say warm blooded warm blooded warm blooded and um so those the, are generally like uh jumpers hunters chicaners racehorses arabians arabians it's about the way that they take an air and their their skin's very thin uh they're generally designed to go fast or long distances okay so whereas like a cold-blooded horse would be like a draft horse and it is designed to Pull a lot of stuff. I just grabbed some black right here. Pull some stuff. Very heavy, heavy stuff. Now, there are horses that are water horses, right? right. In what way do you mean? Like, uh, aren't those the, the horses that run at Chincoteague? They okay, ra- well, they're not water horses. They're a pony. They're ponies. <laughs> right. The, the, the ponies of Chincoteague are, they do swim, but they're not water horses. They are just, they were probably Spanish castaways mm. um, from... They probably come from Spanish descent, and they were left there, and they live on this island, and the, the Bureau of Land Management swims them in once a year to uh, sell off the excess. And then Margaret Henry wrote a very lovely book called Misty of Chincoteague. We're going to take this highlight down here. And so you can see we're just pulling these little highlights where they would go. There's a nice one here on the ear. Definitely catch one pop on the tip gotcha so and, and along this little edge here just refined that, that you're using which white for to do that right now just the titanium white the titanium white okay i just missed it on the on the switch okay so we're still in the titanium white now some of these lines need to be refined <clears throat> so that lets me just come back i'm probably going to do most of the painting with this red crazily enough so you know, cold-bloods are like draft horses and big like that, right? Yeah. What's a unicorn? Uh, glitter-blooded. Glitter-blooded. <laughs> you thought you could mess with me, but I've well, already been like in my room as a little girl going. Whoa. I think this has never come up in our marriage, but I I had to figure that they. I would have a thought or a feeling on it just having known me for a bit of time. And the closest I could come up to a water horse would be those ponies. And yeah. unicorns are well, clearly... There was a very famous horse in like the 1920s that did jumping and had a girl and they would jump into water together. We caught it to Oh, the, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The diving... Yeah. yeah it was, that, that was less of... So we're just trying to refine some of these hot reflections on the air as we come through and bring that in. I feel like I'm going to get into the... Uh, tinting white the zinc again because I want this very soft, soft um, gray here off the back of the ear. See how soft that is compared to the titanium white? Yes. And that's going to let me do some blending here and then using the titanium create some very hot spots where you can really feel the light happening on it. Now, if one were so inclined, mm-hmm. you could add a unicorn horn to this gentleman standing here. Yes, could you be, could. Could be a fair lady as well, as yes. I don't know. But it'd you, be, could, you, know, you could make the black a secret unicorn, yeah. You were, you were saying you that this was like the black stallion. You, could do, that, you so could do that. Just extending on that, yeah, you know. So just trying to create this subtle shading that's happening right here. And I can always go back and I'm like in from this and blend in. See how we're doing? Uh-huh blending in and it's really just trying to catch those little subtle things so we're really painting today let's bring a little shadow into that bone area and another little shadow into that bone area and then if i come into my white paint i get some very powerful effects that i can get so i can come right here and pull out up the ear there's a delicate little space that i'm going to highlight Pop a little bit of one there. And again, something a little more intense there. And we're starting to pull those ears out. Mm-hmm. And it's important to pull the ears out. So, are, are unicorns delineated breed by their horn or their build? Unicorns have no delineated breed. Oh, so just like whether they're, they're unicorns, <laughs> so whether it's a golden. Doesn't horn. matter. I think you can, unless okay. Are we talk? Let's keep to painting. 
All right. But unless we're talking a My Little Pony universe, which of course we can brony it all up. That's true. Right? Where you get into alicorns and is it a princess and what their cutie marks mean. But I think that probably My Little Pony did more thinking. That's true. In the nature of what makes certain unicorns uh, a certain kind of way than any other any other group, I would say. Well, you, you know our Sherpets, are, that they... Are they fun? They're they like think about this about kind of stuff. We all think about this kind of stuff. And I knew that you, as a grown-up, have thought about these things. I and have thought about these things. Don't kid yourself. Of course I have. And this is a little brush-friendly painting. This is a very little brush-friendly painting. And speaking of, I think I'm going to see if I can pull out some fluid white, or I can thin the white I have. I'll thin the white I have so you guys don't feel like you have to go out and buy another paint. I'm going to load up on my detail brush. This is a number one Arturpa detail. Any of the brushes that you see here today, that you're, if you're looking for them, um, they are located a lot of places online. Uh, you can get them at Michael's. They've got a coupon that you can use for a lot of these. Uh, the brush guys have them, and if you use the code Arturpa, you can get a 5% discount, the Arturpa. Mm -hmm. um, Kings in Canada carries carries it. Jackson's carries it. Hyatt in New York carries it. So there's some places you can find them on Amazon. So a lot of times you guys will be like, I can't find the brushes. Just just trust me. You just they are out there. In oh yeah. Spades. Just hey hey below list. So yeah. I'm adding little detailed highlights right here. And that's really just pop this this feeling of the hair having uh reflections can you guys see that kind of happening yeah those the, that detail brush really makes it capture the it makes it look like there's there's the individual hairs that are catching the light and and we kind of want that sometimes we want the individual hairs to sort of capture the light a little bit sometimes it was a uh, i think it was julie or no it was uh, Mar Mar uh oh gosh it was just you have so many wonderful comments. So now we have this gorgeous ear. And doesn't it look just like the picture? Yeah, I'll pull that picture up. See, they were, we're pulling it up every once in a while so you guys can see there, but I don't want to uh, leave it up because it's, it's not terribly... You can, it's real hard to see it relative to this. Oh, really? Well, it's such a small picture, and you're working such a detailed area like of that ear. Right. The, it, it's it's good Will it let for you zoom into the ear yeah well the reference maybe i'm going to be working the main and the other ear i don't know i don't know if that's something we have the power to do maybe but i think that the best thing is if you can print, print these out. off it <laughs> yeah because if you just go get the or reference even pull it onto your phone and then just zoom it in yes because zooming into those areas as you're working them is where you're gonna gonna see a lot of benefit let's see how we're doing here and the great thing... So there we go. We've got that whole thing, and it looks, you know, doesn't look dead, doesn't look gray, doesn't look chalky, is looking fantastic. So again, I'm going to get a little of my black, and I think, again, I'll do the tinting white to do this. because I want to I wanna raise it up, but I don't want to... And you can see I'm following the, the pattern of the hair mm -hmm. in my brush stroke, and that will also help. Working the gritting method makes it so that uh, even even little brushes can approach something like this. I do, at 12, I would have been painting this for sure. I'd have been like, I don't know who this lady is on YouTube, but she's painting a horse, and that's what I'm doing today. Mm. Well, I, I just practiced again and again and again. I was obsessed. So we can start to see that mane is being shaped there. And as we go, we're going to get just a little more of the tinting. Yeah, I feel for something like this where we have such subtle transitions mm -hmm. in the black and white, this is helpful. If all you have is titanium white, just follow the steps and use the titanium white. Yeah. Don't not paint it. Just know that there's a tool out there that you may want to invest in later for the reasons that you're seeing now. You can see we're starting to create that subtle shading. And it's a very, very light effect isn't it look at that so this is the reflection of light on the forelock which is the bangs on on a horse okay so i didn't even have to ask. I was like, i'm pretty sure that's what it was i've heard you say it before but if 
you were new here. You were new here, you'd be like, what is that lady talking about? That's, that's his reflection. And then when I have that in, I can come here with a little bit of white and just very carefully. You can see I'm on the toe, and I bring that back. I'm looking at my reference and sort of paying attention to the way the light moves along these hairs so that my reflection has that, that feeling to it. Okay, that sometimes there's a little more paint that comes off on that forelock. I'm going to work this ear. Get a little bit of our muted gray with the tint. And we're going to begin to talk about this space because this actually has much more uh, variations on the gray than some of the other areas in the piece. So we want to really start to capture that. And then as we need to, we can come in and now we're getting into the titanium white. And you can see that's a much more robust. Kind of gray. Right here, a little bit off here, just barely, just barely a little bit off here. And then we see a little highlight up here on his little bone. The little bone is starting to have a little moment at the top of his little face. He's Look at that. So we're starting to, we're still paying attention to where we have highlights, where we have shadows. Let's get a little black on our brush. Make sure that that's shaped well. Now this here is very distinctly. Let me come back with just a little black. And talk some about that shadow. Let's even deepen this one right here at the back of this ear. I'm looking at. Well, I'm letting this dry because at some point, um, once I've blended it, I need it to dry to get the next layer on. And so I want to make sure that I've got space for that. Go black under here. As you would have, because that would cast a shadow, wouldn't it? This is fairly dramatically lit space. As you would have. I'm going to get into the zinc or transparent white. And let's talk a little bit about this highlight that we see here. Coming forward. Really hot. Right before the almost like little white spot of a star. Which the black did not have, by the way. Black had no marking. So that would be a little more of a black beauty kind of marking. They're seeing the uh, pictures emerge on your palette again. Are they? There's a horse's face forming there. <laughs> See its nose and mouth and the, <laughs> four, the little. It's just you guys are the best. <laughs> so we're going to come down here and there is this coming up above the eye. We have this sort of very subtle. Subtle space that's going on above the eye and then in front of it. I would, if you're a big horse fan, I highly recommend get some more of our little zinc here. I highly recommend uh, really doing this piece big once you do it in the 11 by 14 size if you're a huge horse fan. Mm. Tremendous painting. Right underneath here, there's a bit of a highlight that we can talk about. And uh, forward here. Again, look how soft this is. We're being very soft, careful with how we are painting him. And when you're trying to get these really subtle details around the muscles, the face, everything about it, you've got to really, really make those transitions calmly. So breathe in, breathe out, pay attention to your body posture. Make a nice little shadow that we would have there. 
not a nice little shadow it's got a little more black paint you know right here we've got a pretty profound shadow and then coming off that kind of little white warlock spot there is this fairly well thought out darker value up over the eye And then coming forward. Meaning horse. So, see, he's starting to come out. Yeah. All right. A little more of our zinc with just a tint. Up the ear. Softly, and right here. I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of my titanium white and my black because I need a gray, but it needs to be a little more opaque, a little stronger. Get the back edge here. A little pop right there because that's quite quite warm. And then I rinse out my brush and I wipe out my brush and I get some black paint and I'm gonna come here and definitely definitely refine that. Create a refined little shadow there. Let's get into our little detail brush for a half second. So dip in the water and swirl it around. Let's make a few little of these little, oh, that the camera really caught a few little hairs. So and there, right down the back. So see, we're starting to see that. Uh huh. Oh, wrong and button. then on the on the forelock, definitely create some little hot spots. There we go. There's your little hot spots, aren't they? A little more of that. So warm and cold-blooded refers to temperament. Is that right? Temperament and some physiology. Okay. Right. Not temp blood temperature, though. No. Okay. So they, they don't like, one doesn't have like a higher average body temperature than the other. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, not that I am either. But that's, I always kind of thought that was interesting. I didn't, you know, it was temperament kind of, though. That's what that's. So you can see I created these little details here. And when we zoom out, can you see how it looks like a Black animal being reflective. Yes. It's shiny. Shiny. Very shiny. Shiny. Getting that shine on. Let's pull some highlights right here. Got some just zinc loaded on. I pulled it out. I'm going to just soften it with my brush where I can. Let's get a little more zinc. Definitely some right there. And I'm just looking at how the hair reflects and where the most of it is reflected. Now I can come in here and get a little bit of my Light gray, right in front of the eye, and pull that back, and then maybe a little bit along this little ridge here.
brush that forward just a pitch. And then if you get right back into the black, you can come here and create this sort of like shadow. Definition that you might be seeing. Moving that forward. You're just trying to determine how light or dark something is and reflect that in your painting. All right, so we're just reflecting how that is. You can see I'm just bringing that very subtly. Subtly light line down through the nostril, comes in through the dish. There's another thing in the dish. There's like almost a V that happens down the center of the nose. So that really dictates quite a lot of the shapes. So I'm going to come back with some black and pull that in. And just keep doing that. I wiped off my black. I'm gonna come back with my my tint white, which is zinc white. Make sure that this is really showing. And right here. And we're gonna begin the process of what is going on right here in front of the eye and down this length of the nose. So you can see I'm just very carefully barely lightening it because again I don't want it to look like a gray horse. I need him to look like a black horse coming out of you know the night or something. That's what he's doing, really, essentially, right? He's coming out of the night. Hey, yes. 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 <laughs> coming out of the night, he is. <laughs> he's coming out of the night. I'm brushing some black back, just making sure that this sort of reflects that. Um, along the eye, we can really come forward and define that space there. There's a little space kind of under the eye we can begin to really strongly define. And a bit of just sort of shadowing there, and then it will begin to come here. Get a bunch of zinc, and you're going to talk about this bone right here. This will be one of those bones that, as a horse lover, if you're a horse lover, it's going to be important to you. Or if you're giving this to the lover of the horse, that's going to be important to them. They're going to look for that. You can see I'm smoothing that out. And what you want to do is you just really want to capture the shape of that sharpness as it comes out. There's a bit of a, it comes back a little bit. And we're going to blend this into the night a bit. See how we're doing? Yeah. Back into this, we'll get a nice mid-gray, saving those very bright, powerful grays for our titanium white. So you see, we're just coming along here. And maybe a little bit more right there. Grab a little more of this zinc. And talk about this still some more. Right here. Softly. This is a soft conversation. So have that conversation softly. See how this brush is letting me make these very soft transitions? Yeah. Super important stuff. If you lose a value, you can always come back and put it back in. Don't feel like you can't. You can't. All right. A little more of this sort of very dark gray, but it does pull it back out of this background, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Right along here, defining that very specific little bone there. We're going to come around the nostril. 
up over here. This is all still enough in light to be seen. If that makes sense. Yes. And let's come under here. So see, this is quite dark. It's a dark, dark value. And then blends into nothing. And if you want to really help it blend into nothing, then you just come here with the black. The nothingness blender. The nothingness blender. So we're just blending that space into nothing. As his head almost develops on our surface. It really does. It just almost develops on our surface. I'm going to not mist my paint because I have, oh, there's my mister. I'm going to mist my paint because it's a very dry, hot day today. Mm. I'm going to get some just zinc. I'm going to start to come here and maybe think about this little hot spot here. That we have there's a little hot spot there certainly a little hot spot right here let's have it start to paint out those hot spots hot spots being bright focuses of light just painting that little hot spot Making sure we're there. Popping up, blending out. There we go. I know. Is it okay? Yeah. I heard a yawn, so I don't know if I got boring on me. No, no. I was <laughs> I, I was lamenting <laughs> that my really coffee. Boring? No, my coffee is in the microwave. Oh, I need my coffee in the microwave. And I just, you know, I this is not a episode where I could sneak off. I could, I could, I could sit my coffee or take some questions so you could sneak off. No, because, I'm okay. Because I really want everyone to have a nice time, including you, babe. No, no, we were good. We're good. I'm actually. So doing... you can see we're starting to pull those little elements in, and is he not just coming out of the black? He is. We're, the we're black doing is good. Coming wanna, out of the black. I, I, I want to keep going because I, I like this. I like this too. It's super fun. Let's make sure that we are. Following those lines that we see. Now there's this beautiful little vein that starts to come back from the nose. So I'm going to talk about that a little. Just softly blend this here. See the little vein there? And there's a bit of a Definitely, there's a shadow. There's a deep shadow under the nostril. And then let's grab some of our transparent white and come back and really help that the lip find its space. That's going to come back like this and be white at that little highlight right there. Just a bit of a highlight there. Just a bit of one here, but this is the one that's the big deal. I'm going to get a little more of this. And then there's another little sort of pop that comes forward between this. And so I'm going to need to make sure I cap capture that little highlight as, we're, as we are going. So here we are, here we are, a little bit of my white and black. A little more black. Come underneath that, where I know that's going to be. And then, there we go. Getting into my little zincs here, my little mixing the exact paint i'm using is linked in the description i'm just telling you all the names it might have so you know that if you've already got it you don't need to run out and get it if that makes sense because sometimes things have different names but they're really essentially the same thing mm. so again we're going to just keep kind of shading this little lip experience 
as we're coming forward, and he should start to show. There I am blending that in. You just got to keep taking them in. I'm going to have quite a nice little hot spot right here. I'm using again just my transparent uh, white and a little black. And then there's a little highlight there. And then one here. Maybe a little bit here at the nose. And then the nose is, it's visible, but not that visible, if that makes sense. Yes. That totally makes sense. So I'm going to start kind of making sure we've got a visible nose, but one that's not that visible. little shadow that happens under here. Pass forward on that nose and comes back like that. I'm going to get some just black. Come up through here where the lips are. And some headway. That's looking good. It's looking kind of good, isn't it? You're making some headway. Da -dun -dun -ch. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. All right. But you guys should be learning a lot. You know, if you do a study like this and then you go to do a color, a color study of maybe a chestnut horse or bay horse or a pinto or an appaloosa, what you're basically going to find is that those things are going to be easier for you to do. You're just taking it back and that. looking at that horse. He's looking at you now, isn't he? Yeah. Coming got, out of nowhere. Got that eye on you. Powerful painting. And this whole painting is going to come together and look hyper-realistic because we're going to do that highlight work. The highlight work is what's going to make it happen for us. So I'm going to get a little of my black and white and make some much more strong grays. Right? Because the titanium white is much more opaque. A little bit in here. Yeah. And then let's get just a little more white into that as we come around here. Just a bit on this coming back. Not as much on the forward face of it. Maybe a little distance sort of in his little nostril. Kiss of like something back in the nostril, but it's a kiss. Not a strong reflection. It's just in there. Mm. Not, you don't want to have a bat in the cave. Yeah, don't give a bat in the cave. Yeah. <laughs> the horses do get bats in caves. <laughs> they do actually have that problem. <laughs> and add again a little more of a highlight using the more transparent white that I'm using. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a fabulous tool for when you're doing this kind of artwork? Because it really lets you do some subtle transitions. Let's come here and make a little highlight here. Why are we doing that? Because there's a little vein. And if you, if you want to really capture this, one of the things that you've got to do is you've got to capture those veins as they happen. I'm going to grab a little more of my white and then maybe the front of that vein. Capture some of this one right here. That's going to come together like also when I put it in shadow. And then I come and get some just black. Because those have these little shadows underneath them. You don't want to forget those.
half green that. All right, so I don't need this grid right now. I've got enough of my face in. And I'm going to now at this stage, because I'm feeling very confident, and I'm going to take this right here out. See what I'm going to pop and what I'm not going to pop. If this is silly, I'm using the wrong brush. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, I should use a bigger brush. I'm going to be working <laughs> with this forever. I'm going to grab just a number 10 bright. We're going to need a bigger boat. Going to need a bigger brush. Do, do, do. And come back in and do deep detail work with my little filbert. That just works. Just, whoosh, it just took it right on out. Yeah, it does. It just takes it right on out. And I don't need more of it, so. A little bit of black paint. There we go. Just trim that nose in. Because now we're at the stage we've got our objects in and the grid, none of the grid that's left has anything to do with where we're going to put any anything. Has it? There's nothing to do with nothing. Right. So you, you know, there's this point where you don't want to replace the grid, and then there's this point where you're like, yeah, I can go ahead and do that. I don't need that part of the grid. You're like... Now, right here, into the horse's head, I'm going to take the time to very lightly feather back and forth. Oh, to get that nice into the darkness blend? Yeah, you really need it. It's important. Even if you think you don't need it still, you do. I could have gotten rid of all this chalk with just water, but I want the black. And this is having two coats of black on this background. I'll zoom in. You can really help. see how, how it gets blacker. So now we've got this beautiful black background. And if you need some color after this, my mom's got her horse and it's going to be all white and purple and colorful. You know what's really interesting about this? Hmm. Is there are shadows both that create the background and as a foreground element. Yeah. It's crazy, right? It's, there's a foreground shadow. There it is. Which is cool. It is super cool. I just, as a fan of interesting art stuff, I noticed that as we're doing our thing as you're doing your thing now you're gonna trim in that eye a little bit along here making sure because at this point the white chalk would take away you want to make I sure i don't want to have any of that there i'm trying to make sure that's all cleaned up and that is all cleaned up yeah so we've got this kind of value shaping happening here. Now we've got to pop some really intense. Uh, took out too much of his eye. See a bit into his eye? Oh, yeah. Before the paint's dry, I can just come back. And take it back out. So it's okay. I'm going to get a little more into my white this time and my black and white. This is the titanium white. And I'm going to, not my fully white, white reflections yet, but like right here. I'm going to make that highlighted reflection. And here I'm going to have one. Under here. Definitely, definitely want one coming down here. Sort of turns in like this. Off the back of this eye here. You see, I'm just. See how that's looking? Back. Up. Yep. It's turning out really nice. Yeah. You just, you want this to be a particular way. So I'm not rushing it today because I know the painting you guys are trying to make. So I want to make sure that we're talking about that painting. <laughs> right here at the front of the eye. And in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be moving it down. You step back to look at things. I think you go to the, the palette. I'll, I'll point to where I'm going to go. I'm stepping back. <laughs> See? There you get go. me. 
She gets me when she gets all introspective on the yes, art. So I'll take a minute and look at that. You yeah. guys can resolve and see where you are compared to that. It's a great and, place to grab a screenshot to see where the stage is. And you can see that this is, you know, we're getting really close. To the end. Yeah. Real, And we get to do the fun of the... Um, come along here. A little bit. Definitely need to work a little bit of one right here. You're going to enjoy reading the chat later. Am I? Are there's they a, having fun? There's a lot of horsey chat in here. I am so glad. I was thinking there was because I was there's, like, we're talking a lot about like, like horse anatomy, oh, horse history. There's And right now, they've been on other horses in pop culture. And we've gone from Trigger to Flicka to Mr. Ed. Um, we've covered... I mean, some Have we the, covered Shadow Fax? Uh, I didn't see Shadow Fax come up. Have we covered Flame? N no. No. I don't think so. See, that's what I'm saying. There's, there's... Hidalgo isn't real, which was a bummer. Mm. But he's real in the hearts of children everywhere. I mean, he's real in my heart. I was really upset when they were like, no, I was like, oh my gosh. I'm dead. Oh, who, who is the horse in um, the, uh, it was a Disney movie about the Aztec gold. Oh, I don't know what that horse's name was, but that was so funny. Dude, that horse was awesome. The Road to El Dorado. Yes. El Dorado, and I That's swear it. they used him for the horse in Tangled. And in the horse and, from and it, Hercules. And in Beauty and the Beast. So in Disney's universe, horses are smarter than people. Yes. But and if your horse runs away, go with him. Yes. <laughs> I'm totally there. If, you, if your horse bolts, follow. Follow. He's got, he's got a point. Unless it's an Arabian, then it was just ankle-biting dragons or alien abduction or whatever they're worried about today. <laughs> it's looking up at the sky going, what's coming for me? <laughs> they do. So I'm just, you can see, I'm using the edge of the bristles, just sort of kissing. <laughs> Kissing, kissing little parts of the of the surface, very, very lightly, creating these little, these little kind of reflections. Almost in unison, people were screaming, "Spirit!" Oh yeah, spirit was great. Let's just barely dust this right here. Can you see the dusting? Something right there's something right here. I'm almost dry brushing, capturing little bits of. What's happening right here? And I'm almost dry brushing. Is that right there? Yeah, I'm pulling on any extra water that's on my brush. I'm going to get quite a dark gray because I want to sort of transition this a little bit softer. Still a strong transition, but just a little bit softer than what I have. And you can see where that's relevant. All right, so... So we're going to do, uh, we're going to start talking about our eye, but I want to get some highlights through here. So are you ready to find your highlights? I think so. I'm going to get my titanium white and my detail brush. I'm, eye is going to be the thing that I work out last. Just using this white. To show this reflection. By the way, this works on your black Labradog, Labradoodle, your black Labrador, whoever you've got that's black, black Pitbull, you know, American Staffordshire Terrier. That's who this reminds me of. Oh. I, Tornado, which was Zorro's horse. Oh, dude. Yes. Okay. Yes. Also. That's who I was thinking. I couldn't, I couldn't remember his name, but then I was just, I was like, well, I have Google. So I was like, what's Zorro's horse's name again? It was Tornado. I'm sure in Spanish there's a cooler way of saying tornado, which I am sure Google will not tell me, but 
Uh, uh, Google will. <laughs> I'm sure that someone out there does know. <laughs> Google will tell you that. I'm sure, but I... Google Translate all the time. I, sometimes people leave really nice comments, but they do it in another language, so i got to use Google Translate to re read the comments so I can answer. Super useful. What brush did you switch to? I am switching to my number one detail brush in the Art Triple line. Yay! Mm, like Azel's in uh, Houston has them. I think, I'm trying to think who has open stock. Uh, Are those available in any of your sets? I think uh, the brush guys might have open stock. Yeah, no, these are not available in any of my sets. That's turning out so cool. Can you see his so reflection cool. coming together? Yes, I was just coming over to the wide camera just to kind of show that, but he's looking really good. Yeah, he's just looking amazing. As you know, uh, there's a little bit of detailing that happens right here. We're going to come in and just detail that. Sometimes there's just no rushing. There is there may be some controversy. Right here. Huh? It, it turns out Zero's horse may have also been named Diablo, or it may have been Diablo instead of Tornado. But I don't know. I'm not a connoisseur. Kind of, I'm not like a historian of Zoro. I just it was one of my favorite shows as a kid because dude fought with swords, and I like sword fighting. So, I liked him because he fought the bad guys. Well, he was awesome. He had to like, you know, he had this cool little mask. He, he wore hats. I'm into hats. He wore a sword. I like capes and boots. He has capes and boots. I mean, like, there was what's not to like about Zorro? This is really coming together. I'm loving this painting. Maybe I should be Zorro for Halloween. You could be Zorro for Halloween. I'm not. I don't have a cool Spanish accent. I would, I would be the pasty version of Zorro. So we're just capturing those little shiny bits. You're kind of seeing here like the little sparkles. These are little hot spots that are on our little friend here. Maybe that was the Cisco's kid's horse. Oh, man, there's so much. There's horse stuff happening out here. There's like... This is Cinnamon's jam. She's She's too busy. Deep no, I in I'm listening to you. I'm like, I'm actually just loving him come together and... Oh yeah, no, he is. I, I'm. In, you're gonna enjoy chat. There's. If you, you guys are watching this on the re rewind, you can see in chat. It's a lot of fun. You should join us. There's. You get some thoughts and feelings in that area. I do. I'm pulling up a little reference photo here. What? What's great is when you get into the eyes. Yeah, that's when this whole thing is gonna become the best painting. You've done in your life. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got these little hot spots up on his little chin that are just showing his reflection. See, see it there, Cinnamon? We've got a little, huh? That better? Yeah. We've got a little crazy. I'll just take a little of my, uh, my tinting white and my black and just kind of soften that out. See how we do. Easy to do. Easy, easy enough to do, right? But you're just trying to make sure that you've got that. Now, I'm going to do a number four round at first. I'm definitely putting on my glasses. Your. My glasses. I'm going to put enhancer. out some more black. You want to see my vision enhancers? They have brought. <laughs> uh, let's put out some more of this really soft. Uh, so in this line, it's called um, tint white. In other lines, it's called zinc or mix it. You're working on the eye now? It's basically transparent white. I'm going to work on the eye now. I'm going to use my number four. I'm going to pull this little sucker over real close because I'm going to get into it. Get into it. This is what super the big hit. Oh, now the, the brush strokes on this is really important to get those yeah. fur shapiness. I'm I feel so. I'm sure that there's a more 
an anatomically accurate way of saying first shapiness, but for the purposes of what we're doing. Create a darker value up front. And I've got to have one back here because I'm going to put in a very tiny lid and I need a deep shadow for that lid. And then under the eye, we're going to pull up a deep shadow. As you do. There's a couple of them in a couple of places. So you want to just make sure that you've got them where you're going to need them. Deeper. Oh, you're right there. His eye is going to just pop, 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 pop. Technical term. Mm-hmm. So, coming right here. Start to talk about what is upper lid space. Now, real quick, right I... in here, we're going to talk about what is the lower lid space. And this is which brush? My number four round. Okay. So, number four round. Really, any number four round that has a good point. You, yeah, I'm just we're just trying to understand what size and because you, whether you're using the smaller one or a bigger one. This is where we're at. That's right okay. Now. You're all right. Coming in and adding a dark gray right in here. softening that transition that's going to be happening. And just black. Right here. And also I want some just black I'm on the tip of my brush. A little bit on the inside corner of his eye. And I'm going to make a pretty dark gray. And we're going to start to do the orb. So when I have that that dark gray. Grab some of your white, white. While the paint's still wet. And right there and add the little bit of white to his eye. The kiss of it, you don't want too much of it. Come along this lid here. A little more black. I'm trying to, when you see me rolling, what I'm doing is I'm getting it um, worked out. There we go. Value up there. So one thing that you can do is you can get right into the zinc while the orb is still sort of light and begin this glass beautiful the photographer did like an amazing job of lighting this horse's eye like seriously amazing yeah being able to capture that is really fun yeah Gonna highlight through here. There's a little bit back there. It's real heavy through here. You see it starting to happen? Yeah. The transparency is very nice. I'm 
Maybe a little reflection back there. Again, just the here of a highlight right there. Up at the top of the lid. Mm hmm Hair of a highlight. Maybe there's one right here. And one right there at the front. The bit underneath. Yeah, the picture in picture really doesn't do too much help with the eye here. Yeah. Just I mean, you're you're so good at these eyes. Yeah, he's oh look at her. What a put a face. She's so pretty. He's a pretty bit. Yeah, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I'm you're gonna, gonna get some just white on here. You're gonna love chat afterwards. I'm Am not, I? I'm, I'm not telling you all the stuff they're talking about, but it's good. Is it great? Yeah. All right, let's add a little bit of a hot reflection along this lid. Definitely drop a little bit some hot reflections right here while we're working on it. <laughs> Darlene says, our Shetlands were mean, stubborn little ponies. Uh, that is a Shetland. You've just described Shetlands. Mean, stubborn little ponies that are smarter than their owners. See, I told you I had to be careful about, like, you'll jump into this chat well, so dude, fast. Well, dude, because we had a Shetland. You, that but, Shetland tortured all the other horses. <laughs> it was just smarter and better. <laughs> when we put him on a diet, he got real evil, too. There's so much, He like, took all of his little stable mates food he'd wait till we leave and he would scare him with like paper bags or whatever he could grab because he was all about scaring him there's great horsey lore going on i like that great horse or great horse? great horsey lore like like lots of like information i didn't I know about horses got the stuff. number one round here and i'm going to come and try to really work these deep values in so around his eye I want to make sure that I've got a very dark black. And then under the lid here. And then also on his pupil, which I'm going to come across. We're putting that in there. Now I'm going to dry this so I can do the last reflection. Okay. That's, oh, I just I'm so I'm so looking at this picture myself and you know, I got just sort of caught up and daydreamy there, so sorry I didn't hit mute. I was like, wow, that's kind of turned out cool. I'm grabbing some just white. Just white. Pure titanium white. And let's have that reflection. One right there. I've got to make a softened one here. Just these little hot spots. Talk about the little hot spots. See how those little high reflections just really pull it all together and pop mm -hmm. that contrast and make this painting come out of the blue. Now, this is a great place if you've got your transparent white, to use it. You can use the titanium, but the subtlety of being able to come over here with this root, with this particular white, blend out that part of the reflection and come back into the titanium. But my hand is like a hot mess. And make some of this even warmer in the center. Say, let's take a look at them. I'm going to back up. I'm going to let you take a look at them. We're going to see, did we nail it? I think so. That turned out really nice. I'm sure, I oh, can't see over your head. You'll have to. There you go. See, look at that. 
Well, you look from the wide shot. Straight on. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> My ears peeking in. Your ears were peeking in here. So, it's a good time to sign him. Yeah. Right? Good time to sign him. I'm going to use my zinc and black. I want just a, I want to be able to see it, but I want to make it pretty subtle. And I think actually I may sign him right here. Dip in water to improve flow. That is very subtle. You know me, I like. Subtle Imagine sharp. a big white signature, red you know. signature on this piece. You'd be just like, what is that? It's there, but it's not going to take away from the That whole turned piece. out really cool. So there, that, okay. that turned out. See, I really like this. Yeah. This turned out really nice. How do you guys feel about it? Did we nail really it? Really good, yeah. Is that is that nailed? You feel pretty good about that? Do you feel like you got the values and the, and the shininess of his face? I'm ready to turn around. Yeah. All right. Well, look at that. Not a lot of color. Um, you could, if the zinc is optional, the transparent whites are optional, though I highly recommend adding that to the paint box. If you can get it, it comes in all kinds of lines from student to professional. So there should be an option out there that you can find that is within your budget. And I do think it's worth adding. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Be sure and go check out my mom's video, which is next. The link is in the description and paint her horse too so you can like horse 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 it up this saturday be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at the easel really soon Bye bye, bye, -bye.